performance art deals with the body as well. And uh, artist Chris Burden has a tendency to, to deal with this in a very like, controversial sort of way, or at least early on in his career. And his early performances really involved a lot of like, physical danger to himself as a form of artistic expression. So let's look at the documentation for the 1971 shoot. In shoot, I'm shot in the upper left hand arm by a friend of mine um, with a 22 rifle. The only visuals I have of this piece is a very short film clip, about eight seconds long. So I'm going to begin the piece with an audio tape that was made during the actual performance. Talk about the action first. Um, he was shot by a small caliber rifle by a, an assistant of his. And um, I mean, what, so what's the point? Um, I'll leave that to you at this or at this moment. But I want to uh, I want to bring out that the documentation of it. You'll notice that there was like a very small amount of visualization of it. There was a very little film that was shot. There was a larger amount of audio tape that was uh, recorded. But then in addition to that, we hear the artist talking about it. The, the point is that um, this entire uh, performance was over very quickly, um, but that it's completely reconstructed in the documentation. The next artist I want to focus on is uh, an artist by the name of uh, Stellark. He's an Australian artist whose work focuses really on the body and uh, the capabilities of the human body. And, and he has this dialogue that he set up where he's talking about the human body being obsolete, but he's also talking about the option or opportunity for redesigning it and thinking about it in terms of like where it can go. Um, to this extent, he's uh, developed a third ear that he had uh, surgically attached to his arm um, and then was wired so that he could actually hear things that were whispered into it. Let's look at a very brief clip uh, from a documentary about him. Well, I discovered I was a really bad painter in art school. <laughs> so uh, I really began doing performance right from the beginning and also as a person who was more interested in uh, the idea of the body as not only a medium of expression, but also as a means of experience. So I was always envious of gymnasts or singers or dancers who use their body as, as part of their art form. The first uh, suspension performances involved... Um, using ropes and harnesses. So the body was kind of uh, positioned in space, uh, but it seemed more supported than suspended. Uh, when I came across some images of Hindu-Indian piercing, I got the idea, well, perhaps uh, we can suspend the body in this way, and this would be a more elegant way of suspending the body. So with 18 hooks into the skin, the skin becomes part of the support structure of the body. The suspension performances were done in, in, in Japan, in Europe, in the United States and in Australia. Um, a lot of them were done in Japan where I was living at the time, uh, but uh, some of the key performances, the tree suspension happened in Australia, the Brisbane a choreographed moving performance was another one here and I did a performance in Melbourne which was the 
shaft suspension where the body was hoisted up and lowered down a lift well. The body here is seen not um, pursuing any kinds of transcendental strategies. There's no uh, metaphysical concern. The body is seen here as a sculptural medium. Uh, the body is a sculpture inserted in a space amongst other sculptural elements. Uh, so often the works were site-specific. The body is not seen as a personality or a gender. Uh, the body is seen as an evolutionary architecture. So, I mean, uh we see that he, I mean, he performs, he uses his body very specifically. He puts it through these sort of stressed positions. But it also becomes more about the dialogue of, like, the use of it or the, um, the context that he's working with as opposed to just it being him. It's no longer so much about just him, but it's more about humanity or the human body. Our la the last artist we want to look at is uh, an artist by the name of Orlan. Um, let's look at a little clip of hers first. This is the French artist Orlan shocking Parisians 30 years ago by inviting them to pay her five francs for a kiss. It was, of course, a piece of performance art, which you can now see on display at the Pompidou Center. Standing outside the Grand Palais Art Gallery, she wore a nude bodysuit with a slot at the top into which punters put a coin. The money then dropped into what Orlan calls a sex drawer at the bottom. Women, she says, happily paid up for Orlan's kisses, but many of the men were more stingy. It was a real kiss, a French kiss. And I can note my life before and after, because I was immediately sent to the school in which I enseigned. And I lost my loft, my œuvres in my loft. A year later, Orlan nearly died. She collapsed because of an ectopic pregnancy and was rushed to hospital. She decided to remain conscious and film the resulting surgery. In fact, the life-saving operation gave her an idea that changed her artistic career. She decided to make her body into a work of art and returned to the operating table nine times in the next decade to have plastic surgery in the name of art. The most famous operation left her with two bumps on her forehead, which was supposed to make her brow look like the Mona Lisa's. I tried to use the surgery, but not with her habits of rajeunissement and amélioration, but I tried to work with the images et la chirurgie dans un autre sens, mais m'en servir, parce qu'effectivement, à notre époque, on s'en sert beaucoup. Et donc, euh, j'ai essayé de produire d'autres images. Euh, et je suis la première artiste qui a, qui a fait cela. <rire> Pour moi, la douleur, c'est quelque chose d'anachronique. Euh, le fameux « tu accoucheras dans la douleur » est ridicule. On peut accoucher sans douleur, avec une péridurale. Et aussi, si on a une grave maladie, ou qu'on vient d'être opéré de quelque chose de, du ventre, de quelque chose de très important, on peut nous donner la morphine. Et parfois, ça n'arrive pas à calmer toutes les douleurs, mais tout de même, ça change beaucoup la situation. Et si j'avais souffert pendant les performances, je n'aurais pas pu lire de texte, je n'aurais pas pu faire des dessins avec mes doigts et mon sang, je n'aurais pas pu répondre à la transmission par satellite. So we see that in her early work, she is using her body as a canvas. She, uh, under, she had undergone uh, repeated plastic surgery to change the shape of her body, um, particularly to acquire the ideal of female beauty as depicted by male artists, and to sort of modify uh, the way she looked. But in addition to that, she took and she opened up the entire process. She broadcasts the surgery into galleries. Um, and whereas that can be, it, it's fairly gruesome to watch, um, it's something that takes place over and over again in our society. Now, she's been criticized as being anti feminist because of her approach to, or because of her use of plastic surgery, because of her uh, consideration of like making herself 
look in a, spe a specific way because of this. But in, in actuality, she's responding to the image. She's responding to the, the way that the, um, that the human body is, is manipulated, the way that, um, that uh, the expectation of a particular look.